Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about indoor plants. And more specifically, we're doing a two-part series where we are going to be looking at when to water plants and then how to water plants as well. So if you have not yet grabbed your house plant planner, be sure to do so. They are over on Amazon. There's also a garden planner as well, both very drastically different books. One, uh, the Amazon ones are obviously paperback and then I do have some for sale over on Etsy that are just like the PDF printables. You can either use on your iPad, not print them, or you can print yourself a PDF copy and choose what pages and how many you would like. So with that being said, there is a printout that is free that you can insert into this paperback or your PDF copy on how to water. And we're gonna be using that PDF that is my brain and talking about exactly when this needs to be done. So I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below, I will give you the section in which you should comment which one of these plants is going to be watered today. We're gonna to be going through you know, a number of things with both these plants to determine which ones are candidates for watering. And that is today's video. The next one is going to be looking more so at these products here, what exactly they are and how to water properly. And that's kind of what this whole setup is here. So I'm gonna put these over to the side and we're just gonna focus on these two plants here and exactly what we are looking for. So I left, left the plants in their completely natural state with uh, bummed leaves and all because plant people are not perfect. I can promise you, all the Instagram where the plants also looked like junk before they were trimmed. And this is just real life of having house plants. So I do keep all my house plants for the most part inside of cover pots. And mostly the reason for this is because of the way I water and my house is very dry. So I have very high rates of evaporation or evapotranspiration if you want to be particularly nerdy. And so I keep mine in cover pots because they do feel as though it helps. Now, if you're an overwaterer or you have a very humid household, you may choose to use like a terracotta pot or um, something that's a little bit more breathable, a cloth pot, something like that, for example. And there's nothing wrong with that either. So just keep in mind, I've stressed this many a times, your pot and your cover pot is a part of the plant's entire micro ecosystem. So if you have a plastic pot, for example, you're going to have lower rates of evaporation and therefore likely lower rates of water use and therefore you may not need to water as often. When you combine that with a cover pot, you are just exponentially increasing the uh, humidity within that microenvironment, particularly in the soil microenvironment, not so much ambiently, but within that soil microenvironment. And you need to watch out for that um, and use it to your benefit or switch it, switch it up to something terracotta that breathes a little bit easier. Now, the size of the cover pot doesn't really bother me too, too much, but I do like to be able to take my plants out. And this is particularly another reason why I do enjoy the cover pot itself. So when you take your pots out, this is a cordatum, philodendron cordatum. People are gonna laugh at me. I'm not good with like plant names. I just buy what's pretty. I'm not a botanist by any means. So fun fact, summer, uh, summer oaks or whatever, rain oaks. She is definitely a botanist. She loves uh, that sort of thing. Stop warming, not not my thing. So here is a great example of a, of a plant that is moist, but not saturated and also not dry. So how do we tell that this is a plant that is not over water? It's very simple. All we need to look at is the actual soil color itself and how it's holding the structure. So we can see quite a bit of it actually sloughed off into the bottom of the pot. And this is a great indicator that it is moist because it is falling apart. And then we look at the color and we can give it a little feel. Now, I don't recommend taking your plants out of your pot, you know, all the time, but until you get a good feel of what a soil needs to be at before you water or when you go to water, it is a great starting point. It's not gonna stress your plant out too, too much. Just be gentle. Don't be mucking around with the roots or repotting the plant in any sense, but just a quick tug, whatever comes out, comes out, and then you're gonna pop it back in. So this is not oversaturated because when we go to squeeze, there's no moisture that comes out. But when I pull my hand away, I do feel kind of like a slight moisture on my hand itself. So you can see my potting soil isn't exponentially, it's not super loose by any means. It's not got a ton of coconut coir or perlite or anything like that. 
and it is relatively heavy in some sense as well. Now, this pot, I want you to let me know if you would water this right now or you would not water this right now and why down in the comments below. So philodendron cordatum, would you or would you not water that plant based on what you just saw? So over here, I have my beautiful purr plant and he's decided this winter he's gonna go crazy and just grow like a madman. So inside of the actual pot itself, we have an exponential amount of mold and I did a whole video, particularly on the white mold and kind of this rusty looking stuff on top. And I did indicate that this is totally normal. You shouldn't forget about it. It may be a sign of overwatering and so therefore you should deal with it adequately if that is the case but in this case you're about to find out just how dry this pot is but again mold not a big deal just a natural decomposition process and it means that my potting soil is microbially active which is never ever a bad thing i don't want to pull them out of the pot but i'm going to pull them out of the pot for this video because he is kind of coming out the bottom of the pot here a little bit but when i pull this guy out you can see i have a whole pot that just popped out and this is a great sign of a plant that is in very much need of water and is overly dry now if you look at this from a, a feel a look perspective you're going to notice right away that the color of the soil drastically different despite the fact that it is the same potting soil and when i clasp or i grab the actual plant and i pull my hand away there's no sense of moisture being left on my hand. So this is a plant that has gone way beyond what it should. This is way too dry. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna water this plant today and then it's likely gonna get a ton of yellow leaves because I'm going to send it into an absolute spiral. So if you're noticing yellow leaves after watering or you're noticing you don't get really bushy plants, it's a really good sign that you are actually underwatering, especially if you let your soil get to this level of dryness. Now, something to keep in mind is if your plant is at this level of dryness once or twice, it's not a big deal. But if you're a habitual underwaterer, you definitely want to change some things up. So you either want to remind yourself to water, maybe put the plant in an area that you're constantly engaging with, whether that be the living room or the kitchen, you are going to want to change your pot. If it's in terracotta, you may want to put it into a plastic pot inside a cover pot. You can also crowd this with other plants to help, or you can make a denser soil. This soil can get much more dense than what it already is, unfortunately, um, but this is just neglect on my part. Christmas season, completely forgot about watering him. Plus he's kind of being a little bit a whore when it comes to water, he needs a lot lately. So you do want to water this plant. So ultimately we can start to see some signs of either overwatering or underwatering on the leaves above ground. And this yellowing of lower leaves or kind of die off of lower leaves is a great sign of underwatering as well as overwatering. What it's telling us is that the plant is starved for nitrogen. And the reason it's starved for nitrogen is because we don't have any water. And the only way for nitrogen or any nutrient to be uptaken is through water. So it's the mechanism in which it's done. If you guys watch the 17 essential plant uh, nutrient series, you already know that it's a smoothie. It comes down to being in a smoothie solution. So that is literally all I have for you on when to water plants. You guys have to let me know if this is helpful. If you are unsure of what your potting soil should look like, any, any of that, I have a website, gardeningcanada.net. I will leave a link down below for the blog post that I made that essentially isn't a blog post. It's just an Excel sheet pretty much. And it tells you exactly what you would need in regards to potting soil, what's going to suit you best based on uh, your requirements, your watering habits, and the environment you do have your plants in. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys want to see next for a video. I'm thinking of doing like a non-plant version. So Jeff from Everything Plants did this and he mentioned my channel in that video. I like watched the whole video. I thought it was kind of fun. It was like non-plant related questions. So if you have non-plant related questions for me, which I do get them all the time, I could probably just do a video on the random DMs I've gotten over the last little bit. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what those may be or if you're interested in a 
non-plant video. I don't really know what to call it. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.